Okay, so in a perfect world, you've got your developer account set up for Fitbit and you've got the firmware update on your Ionic smartwatch. Now, you should be at studio.fitbit.com by now if you followed the instructions in the last article that I wrote. And that will take you to your project list, which in your case is most likely empty, but in my case, I've already started building some projects. But don't worry about that, we're going to start a new project. And let's call it the Ionic tutorial. There we go, I've actually written this before. And there's a bunch of templates you can pick here. You can pick the empty project, starter, that just prints a console, log to your app. So that shows you like the developer console thing. A digital clock, which we're going to pick. Uh, and there's also settings. I'm going to make a tutorial on this some other time. And there's a minimal project, just literally it builds it, does nothing. Sensors, demos, reading data from the hardware. I can actually check that out. You should check that out. And a file transfer template. But we're going to build a clock because that's kind of what we're doing. We're building a nice little clock face. So click on that and then we just head up here and click create. Now that should take its time. It takes a while to build. Or it doesn't take that long because look here it's done. And then we have this open project screen here. So you have your, your files over here. And you've got some tools up here so you can build your project. This should run successfully. It does this little builder thing up here when it runs. Build complete. It worked. And when it's built, you can export the project, so that will export it to a zip file. It'll just bundle all these little projects there. And you can download the app, and you can publish the app. That will also, they all just give you the app files. Anyway, you can also connect your devices. Now, you're not going to really need your phone in this case, so I'm not going to stress about making sure our phones connect. But your device, you should be able to go onto your watch and click that developer bridge mode. So mine's currently disconnected, so it won't find it. I've hit it now on my smartwatch just to see if it will connect. It says it's busy connecting to the server. I wish I could show you this, but there's no real screen recorder for Fitbits at the moment. And it says it's connected. So I'm going to hit refresh, and it does this little loading thing, and there's my Ionic. So hopefully this connects. When it's orange, it means it's connecting. Now it's initializing, and it's connected. So this means I can actually run whatever project it is on my app. So I'm not going to do that just yet. I just want to keep showing you what's going on here. So what we have here is the console. This will print messages while the app's running and also build messages. So it said this is all built fine. This is just a warning saying there's no app icon present. This is a watch face. We're not going to need an app icon. But if you were building an app, you need an app icon so that you can see what the app is. Otherwise, it gives you the default app icon and nobody's going to take your app seriously if it's got the default Fitbit app icon. But that's a bit out of the scope for this. There's just my email and details. So now you know my email address if you ever want to email me. But I prefer that you just email me at barry at barrymichaeldoyle.com. Anyway, and that's the project name. So that's everything you have there. There's a help screen here, which takes you to the developer guide, which I recommend you check out if you do feel like doing your own thing. This certainly does teach you a lot of stuff over here. So basically, your app is going to have the app file, which this is the main file that runs. If I, I can open that there, and this is the code. I know it's overwhelming now, but don't stress. In the next video, I'm going to walk through everything and try to give you a good explanation of what everything does here. There's also a common file here, which has got the just some common helper functions, and then the resources, which pretty much says what your app is going to look like. And we'll walk through that. And then there's a package.json file, which is like your settings file, basically. So you can change the name of your app in here, and you can say what type it is. In our case, we're using a clock face. And later on, we're going to add some permissions here. It's best not to add any permissions unless you need them, because users don't want you asking permission for all their details when you don't really need their details. Like, why would I get to use the internet on my watch face if, if the watch face doesn't need the internet? That's just a bit weird and scary. So only request permissions when you actually need the permissions. And then there's supported locales. We're going to keep it to English, because I don't really know any other languages, except Afrikaans, but that's not really on here. It's close to Dutch, but I don't know Dutch well enough. Right, so before I end this off, I just want to click run here. And if your Ionic is connected, you can hit run and it should show up on your watch face. I'm going to quickly bring up a screenshot of what is going on. Mine's still loading, but what happens is you'll get your new watch face and it will be there. So I'm going to take a screenshot and show that to you guys quickly. It just loads up the screenshot and let me skip to actually getting a screenshot for you. All right, so this is what my screen currently looks like. It's just a red background with the text of the current time. The current time is 6.15 for me. So yours will be different, obviously, because the time... Unless it's 6.15 where you are, then that's a cool coincidence. I wish I could tell you to comment somewhere, but I don't know. 
Anyway, that's going to cut it for this. I'll catch you guys in the next section. Ciao.